Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today I want to show you how you can use the package local auth and how you can identify a user specific to the device with its face ID or fingerprint. On the right side you can see already what we want to achieve today, like an application with a touch to login and if I press it we see the login authentication and if I press now the fingerprint itself we get locked in. So let's get started. Before I start today's episode, I really want to make a big shout out to Dev Berliner. Thank you so much because uh, you brought me to the idea to make this fingerprint video. So thanks a lot and let's go. Our journey starts as so often in pub.dev and here we search for a package like for example fingerprint because that is what we want to do today. And as you can see, we get immediately one or two libraries that uh, points out to especially fingerprint reader or even touch ID and or uh, the other one, Flutter local out invisible, Flutter plugin for Android iOS authentication sensors such as fingerprint and touch ID with no visible dialogue on Android. Okay, so I will take the local auth today because it has a higher score, which is always a very good indicator for how good um, a Dart package is uh, in the references. As you can see, it is also supported by Google people again. So this is the way to go for me today. And here we find a lot of stuff of documentation that uh, you can go through and also what you can have here, for example, is to check if there are biometrics, if you can uh, distinguish between them, for example, face ID for Apple or fingerprint. Uh, the special case is how you call everything, the API, you find the exceptions that happens, and so on and so forth. So, but we want to install the whole thing today. So we take again our dependency here and switch back to our Android Studio. We want to add the dependency in our pubspec.yaml. And as you can see, I already did that here, but I will replace it for now just to make sure. You have that line local auth with the version and say packages.get. And with that, we import all the things into the project. And now I see I didn't share the project yet on GitHub. So I will do that for now. Share project on GitHub, share. All right, so how we can do that is we have to ask the Android device to give us the possibility to log in. And for that, we have the possibility now after we get at the package, um, to um, ask the device to authenticate us against the device itself. So for that, we have to go to our um, settings inside of this uh, device. You can do the same thing for iOS. There it is a bit different, but it works the same way at the end. You have to go to security and location, and there you can set um, a fingerprint. And if you put in a fingerprint, I enter now my very secure pin, 123456. And then you can see there is a fingerprint inside and I can add one by going here and click on the three dots on the side of the simulator in that case. And there you find the option fingerprint. And in fingerprint, you can select one of the multiple fingerprints. And today I decide for fingerprint eight because it's the best fingerprint as we all know. And if I press now touch the sensor, can see it is immediately recognizing it because we touched the sensor so perfectly fine. So um, Android immediately understands the fingerprint. We can say done. And you can see now that I have two fingerprints registered on that device. And with that, we go back to our app here. So now we have a registered, um, a registered fingerprint on that device and we can use it in our application. Right. So we want to make that column here uh, touchable. So if I click on side the icon or on the text, I should get up my uh, login screen. So for that, we wrap the whole thing in a new widget called gesture detector, which contains our knowledge about this gesture. And now if I go inside and I can have the on tap method, which gives me a void callback where I can execute some code. So for example, print um, touch authentication started. And now if I press on touch to login, we should get yeah, a console log down here, which is perfectly fine. But of course we don't want to have an uh, just a print statement. We want to authenticate, right? So for that, I will create a new variable inside of our home screen 
it's a final and we have it through the package we have now the local authentication package and local out and we want to create a new object of this local authentication that we can use that for now and here i got an error with memory usage that's uh, as you can see i have maybe too much apps right now so i will delete some of them all right so back in our app um, i have now created that local auth variable that contains a local authentication object uh, instance and if we jump inside of here we find all the documentation of course and what we also find is the authenticate with biometrics so that means we can authenticate against it or what we also can find is stop authentication which uh, works only on android and we can check biometrics which returns us true if we have uh, biometrics on that device and we have here get aviable biometrics which divide to returns as a biometric type or a list of biometric type. So that means we can have different parts of this. So that is very handy. So now we want to use that in our home screen. Back in our home screen, we want to authenticate now, or we want to check first if we can authenticate. And if we can, we want to uh, do that. So for that, we go to take the local auth here and we say, can check biometrics. As you can see, it's all getting read because it is a future Boolean. It's a getter method. With that, we uh, can't execute it. It's just returning us the value. So I can remove that. Because it is a future, we have to wait to get the information out of it. So our on tap will be asynchronous. And now this returns us a Boolean. So we know this is a Boolean. We can check biometrics. Equals. So and if this is true, then we want to do something. We want to authenticate, right? So local auth dot authenticate with biometrics. And now we give a reason why they should authenticate. Authenticate to see your bank statement. OK. And if I clean up a bit, we can see here. And now. If I remove that print, I think we don't need that yet. If I press now this touch to login, I should get something back because also this is an await, right? So we have to wait for this authentication to happen. And if that authentica authentication happened, we can print this statement because it's also a bool authenticated. Now we know that we are authenticated. So. All right, so now we have entered that authenticated, we get this Boolean back and we print it now if it works. So that should work, right? So now easy, we can get the checked biometrics. We see if we have biometrics on this device and then we just authenticate against them and we print if, it, uh, if we are authenticated or not. So if I press now touch to login, we should see that, right? Easy. But what actually happens is we get an error. And what the error says is unhandled exception, a platform exception. The local auth plugin requires an activity to be fragment activity. And this is now special for Android. And as you see, I already opened up here the folder structure, app, source, main. Then under, for me, it's Kotlin. For you, it could be uh, Java. And then you have here down um, the folder structure where you are inside. And then you find the main activity. And here in main activity, you um, this main activity inherits from the Flutter activity, but it should be a Flutter fragment activity. And for that, if I change that and re so if you want to use uh, the biometrics um, after you have added here the fragment activity, we have to jump right into our Android manifest XML. And there we have to use the user's permission to use the biometric. In the documentation, there is the fingerprint, but the fingerprint is deprecated. So I would suggest to use the use biometric permission here. And if you want to use it, you can also use it in the deep debugger and um, also in the profiles one, just to make sure that it will run in every case. And I click now again the button. 
we can see we get now this nice little information from Google that says us authenticate to see your bank statement. So now to authenticate, we go back to our menu with the three dots here and we can click again on the fingerprints, the touch sensor with one of the fingerprints that is registered. So let's take me one finger that is not registered. What happens then? Of course, it's not recognized. But if I take one that is registered, we are logged in. And what you also can see is we get our print statement. Easy enough. So now, if we know we are authenticated, we want to do something, of course, right? And for now, I prepared already another screen called dashboard screen. And what I want to do is navigate, navigate, push. And now we want to push to context and give the context and want to navigate to the dashboard screen. And uh, it's not quite correct. This callback has to be in a material page route, of course. And then we find this one. Uh, still not. Ah, of course. And here we go. So if you don't know how to create such a navigator, please check out my navigation video. I put a, um, an info box there to make you sure that you know how that works. So, but what should now happen if, if we click on this authentication and we authentication correctly, we will show the dashboard screen. So I try that now and I go here, I touch the fingerprint and as you can see, immediately we change the view now. It works well. All right, guys. Thank you for watching me today. You know now how to use the fingerprint. Now I just have to say thank you for watching this episode. You find on the right side uh, the subscription button as always. And please, if you like the two videos up there, please click them, leave a like and enjoy the rest of your day. See ya.